If you stay true to your authentic self, who knows what larger social movements might happen. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. My name is Whitney Way, and I'm the editor-in-chief of Resident Advisor, a global platform for the past, present, and future of electronic music. It comes to no surprise to me that rave music, club culture, and festival culture can be seen as a threat for certain socially conservative governments, as music has always been a vehicle for political change. It represents equality, liberation, gender expression. It can represent sexual liberation as well. And actually, there's a really long history of dance music as a way to bring about social change and protest movements. So the history of rave music was the fact that black and brown communities, queer communities, they needed to create a space for themselves, essentially finding this authenticity for themselves because there was no one who was going to grant any kind of space or any kind of space for joy uh, for them to exist in. And so part of claiming that authenticity is also taking up space in yourself and then recognizing that if I do this for me, then perhaps other people will feel inspired to join as well. In electronics music's living, breathing history, I think of how, for instance, Carnival in England, it's known as Europe's biggest street festival, but it was initially started in 1966 by Ron Lisette O'Brien, she was an activist in near Notting Hill who decided to do a impromptu street festival for children in the neighborhood um, because it was a way to ease racial tensions. All of a sudden, you know Carnival, Notting Hill Carnival. It's become a part of sound system history. It's become a part of English history. And that wouldn't have happened had not she channeled her purpose and her vision into changing her community. There's also David Mancuso, who after the Stonewall riots decided to host a private space for queer gay people because they were not allowed to commune together in the streets of New York at the time. And it became known as The Loft, which became a huge proponent of New York City club history. And so all these people have essentially utilized music or clubbing or raves and turned them into something that is larger than themselves because of something that they deeply believe in. To tap into your authentic self as an artist, I would instruct one of two things. One, I would say your culture, your upbringing, the things that you've experienced in your life or the interests that you've gravitated towards, that's authenticity as an individual. But to bring that out, go around the world and just kind of absorb everything in a way that it's like you've never experienced it before. For instance, if you travel in a new city or if you're listening deeply to a new piece of music until all of a sudden you are able to bring that and then take those factors and potentially change your life. And ultimately you'll be able to move to your true purpose with these two combined ways of approaching authenticity. Mm -hmm.